Hello. This is Alan Gabowski from Hospital for Special Surgery, and my charge is to review the therapy of rheumatoid arthritis with non-biologic DMARDs based on some of the data presented at the 2011 Annual Scientific Meeting of the American College of Rheumatology. Again, as might be imagined, most of the focus in our therapy of rheumatoid arthritis is on biologic DMARD therapy and the newer molecules for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, and those will be covered in the casts of several of my colleagues, and I refer you to those casts for uh, more information. Today I'm going to cover a series of topics on the therapy with non-biologic DMARDs. Our first presentation is on treat to two targets. Now, you may be familiar with the emerging concept of treat to target. This is the uh, paradigm that has been popularized as a result of an international consensus conference under the direction of Dr. Joseph Smolin, which was published last year in the Annals of Rheumatic Disease. Fundamentally, the treat to target paradigm says that by using an objective validated composite metric together with a therapeutic regimen and making therapeutic decisions based on disease activity as assessed by that metric when the patient is evaluated, one will achieve a better clinical outcome than with um, using standard of care or a therapeutic regimen alone. Well, this group took the concept one step forward, and they said if treat to target gives a better outcome, how about if we treat to two targets? And they looked at 243 patients with early rheumatoid arthritis, um, of this, defined as less than three years in duration, who were treatment naive and had a DAS-28 greater than 3.2, so they had moderate to high disease activity. They were randomized to four strategies, routine care, a DAS-driven care, meaning treat the patient to get the DAS to lower than 2.6, which is a DAS remission, treat the patient to normalize the MMP3 levels, the matrix metalloproteinase 3 levels, or do both. And the patients were seen at various intervals over a period of time approximating a little bit more than a year. And what you see on the slide is that the group of patients that were treated to target by DAS-28 or MM3 did better than the population treated by standard of care, but the population of patients that were treated with both did even better. So it's good to treat to target, but treating to target that is linking a therapeutic decision to a disease activity achieves better outcomes than standard of care, but linking to two targets was even better. And uh, in many ways, that's respective of uh, representative of the old Al Capone comment that you get a lot farther in life with kindness and a gun than with kindness alone. So we should be using at least one target uh, in the disease activity measurement of our patients and making our therapeutic decisions in that fashion. The next slide looks at a study that has been discussed several times in my section and others, the CAMERA study. And here the question is that if you have patients being treated with methotrexate as part of a treat-to-target strategy, can you enhance their outcome by adding low-dose prednisone? And here patients were treated um, with, uh, lo with low disease activity, too low disease activity with early rheumatoid arthritis in a two-year study, and they were treated with either methotrexate and low-dose prednisone, approximating 10 milligrams, or methotrexate without low-dose prednisone. The patients were seen monthly. The methotrexate adjustments were made based on the DAS uh, scores that were seen, and in um, a number of cases, biologics were added if need be. But the point here was to use prednisone as a methotrexate sparing agent, and what you see in the three columns 
is that early prednisone use increased the effectiveness of methotrexate and increased the remission rate with less disability and toxicity. There was one cataract and one vertebral fracture in the prednisone group. We are waiting for the um, DEXA data. But nevertheless, I think what we can see is that early prednisone use, together with methotrexate, increases the effectiveness and remission rate with less disability and toxicity. Now, there has been much discussion in a variety of forums about the TIER trial. And often the TIER trial, which is a combination non-biologic therapy, is compared with the SWIFA trial, which is combination non-biologic therapy and biologic therapy combined with non-biologic therapy. But I want to focus on just one aspect of the TIER trial, which is the methotrexate arm because methotrexate is still our cornerstone non-biologic DMARD, which is used most often in the care of our patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And I want to particularly focus on the group of patients who were treated with methotrexate and who were methotrexate good responders. Now, what you see in the graph is that about 30% of patients with early rheumatoid arthritis did well on methotrexate alone. Patients who had to add on other non-biologic therapies or um, a biologic therapy such as a TNF inhibitor turned out to be roughly comparable in their DAS28 scores at two years. But the point of this slide is that methotrexate is a very good drug when used early, and about a third of patients will go into clinical remission, DAS28 remission, with methotrexate alone. So if you do well on methotrexate, you will continue to do well on methotrexate. If you don't do well on methotrexate, well, that's where both TIR and SWIFOT suggest that whether you use immediate triple therapy, step-up therapy, or uh, addition of a biologic, um, you're going to achieve a roughly comparable outcome at two years. Notice I've said nothing about the radiographic outcomes, and uh, we are all eager to see those comparisons, because while one may very well see comparability of uh, reduction in signs and symptoms and improvement in patient-reported outcomes, I think we're all eager to see whether there is comparable inhibition of structural progression. But that's a topic for a later discussion. The point of this slide is that methotrexate is a very nice drug when used early, and when used early, you get good response in about 30% of patients, and that response is durable. Now, the question remains as to to what extent you can use X-ray progression to predict disability. And this is a study looking at joint damage over eight years of treat-to-target therapy. I bring this up because many of these patients were treated with initial methotrexate monotherapy, and so it's important to look at how patients do over time in any regimen, not just in terms of signs and symptoms and not just in terms of improvement in patient-reported outcome, but also in terms of their X-ray progression. And I think what you can see here is that a significant number of patients had no radiographic progression or minimal radiographic progression over eight years of a treat-to-target therapy regimen. This was a sub-analysis of 463 patients with early rheumatoid arthritis extracted from the best studies who have x-rays at baseline and also at one year. So while there was radiographic progression and while radiographic progression was associated with disability through uh, over the eight-year period of time, there did appear to be a cohort of patients who were treated predominantly with monotherapy who had suppression of radiographic progression and did well over time. So we are even able to see the inhibition of radiographic progression 
with non-biologic therapy over time, but only when it seems to be a treat-to-target approach is employed, namely using an objective metric at each visit and making therapeutic decisions based on disease activity as assessed by that metric. Finally, the question always comes up as to what the objectives and goals of our therapy should be. Well, as I've already outlined, we have three major goals, which are inhibition of signs and symptoms, which are improvement in patient reported outcomes, and inhibition of structural progression. But it turns out that there is a fourth desire and goal as well, and that is reduction of the inflammatory burden so as to diminish the associated comorbidities that often go along with increased inflammation. And I'm referring in particular to cardiovascular risk. It's well known that the incidence of cardiovascular events is higher in patients with rheumatoid arthritis as a function of their disease activity that more cardiovascular events are seen in uh, patients with higher disease activity and fewer in patients with moderate disease activity, but there is an excess of cardiovascular events as a function of the inflammatory burden. This study asked the question, whether you could reduce the cardiovascular burden and decrease the incidence of cardiovascular events with a non-biologic strategy, particularly with hydroxychloroquine. And here they looked at um, three cohorts of patients. These were uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis who never used hydroxychloroquine, patients with rheumatoid arthritis who ever used hydroxychloroquine, and patients with rheumatoid arthritis who had a prolonged duration of use of hydroxychloroquine. And if you look at the Kaplan-Meier curves, what you see is that the patients who had significant and prolonged use of hydroxychloroquine have a significantly better and significantly decreased incidence of cardiovascular events in that population. So reducing the inflammatory burden with a generally thought to be fairly mild non-biologic DMARD was significantly associated with a reduction in the cardiovascular incidence of disease in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Well, I've covered several topics which I think will be of particular interest as abstracted from our annual meeting this year. I do invite you to review some of the other webcasts that have been presented by my colleagues as noted on uh, this slide, because I think that um, we've really attempted to extract what is most important and present it in an easily digestible format that can provide you with the most important information in a very efficient utilization of your time. I want to thank you for listening to this webcast uh, at this time and again encourage you to participate in others and I look forward to interacting with you at numerous other presentations and forums when we get together. Thank you.